Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to another uh, edition of the Norwich Bookstore from Home, another virtual reading with the Norwich Bookstore here in Norwich, Vermont. And first, let me say Happy New Year to everyone out there. Um, thank you for joining us for our first author event of 2022. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam. I work at the Norwich Bookstore. I'm one of the co-owners. And on behalf of all of us uh, at the store, I welcome you tonight. Uh, we've got a great crowd out there, uh, a lot of familiar names and some folks that I didn't recognize. Wherever you're joining us from tonight, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, we are kicking off 2022 and our 2022 author events program the right way with a wonderful reading with two of our favorite local regional poets, both of whom have recent collections tonight. We've got Carol Westberg and Laura Foley here sharing their most recent collections with us, and we are just delighted to have them. Before we begin, I'm going to just make a couple of announcements. Please bear with me for a little housekeeping. The first part is about those books. That is, of course, what we're in the business of doing here at the Norwich Bookstore. Uh, we celebrate books, we peddle books, we push books into your hand. And tonight we are pushing two books in particular, two wonderful collections from local poets, Why I Never Finished My Dissertation by Laura Foley and Icelands by Carol Westberg. Both of these wonderful poetry collections, uh, you'll be hearing poems from tonight and they are on our shelves at the Norwich Bookstore for you to come and pick up. And uh, tonight, if you love what you hear, and I think you will, we hope that you will get copies of both of these books and uh, bring them home, read them, love them, cherish them on these cold days. I'll be posting links in the chat tonight so that you can order these books online if you'd like. We can uh, make them available for pickup at the store. We can send them to you wherever you may be. Um, we can even wrap them up and put them out on our porch for contactless porch pickup, if that's the way you're feeling these days. And if you are uh, in the neighborhood and want to come into our store and pick up one or both of these books, we encourage you to do that as well. We are open seven days a week in Norwich, Vermont on Main Street. We'd love to see you. We'd love to put these books in your hands. So again, thank you for supporting local authors, local poets, allowing uh, Laura and Carol to keep doing what they do. And thank you for your book purchase, which also supports the Norwich Bookstore, allows us to keep doing this and keep these author programs running. We really appreciate it. Now, tonight, uh, we are going to hear some poems. Um, we're going to do a little reading. Laura will read first, followed by Carol Westberg. And then we will open up the floor for a little bit of Q&A. So if you have a question that you would like to ask one or both of these wonderful poets, I hope that you will drop that question into the Q&A, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen on your toolbar. You can type your question in there. Alternately, you can also put your question in your chat bar. I will be monitoring both of those and I would be delighted to get to as many of those questions as we can at the end of the evening. Now, there are sure to be other events on our calendar coming up this year that you will enjoy. Uh, the Norwich Bookstore hosts many events. We, we like to host a couple a week during our busiest season and many events in the course of the year with national touring authors, with authors from overseas sometimes, with authors who live right here in, in our backyard here in the Upper Valley. Uh, we love to host them all. So tonight, if you think you might want to attend more of these, we hope that you will check out our uh, events page, our events calendar on our website. I'm also going to drop a link in the chat to sign up for our email newsletter. If you've not done so, we send out one a week and we'll let you know about other fun things like this we've got going on. You can also follow us on social media. We're at Norwich Bookstore on all the major platforms. We hope to see you back at an event like this one in the near future. And now without further ado, I am delighted to welcome Laura Foley and Carol Westberg. Uh, we are so honored to have them both in our virtual reading room tonight. And tonight we're going to start with a reading from Laura Foley. Laura Foley is the author of seven poetry collections. Her most recent, Why I Never Finished My Dissertation, this beautiful book here, 
received a starred Kirkus Review and an Eric Hoffer Award. Her collection, It's This, is forthcoming from Salmon Press. Her poems have won numerous awards and have garnered national recognition. They're read frequently by Garrison Keillor on the Writer's Almanac and appearing in Ted Kuzer's American Life in Poetry. Her poems have appeared in Alaska Quarterly Review, Valparaiso Poetry Review, in Poetry Society London, Cranagh Magazine out of Ireland, DMQ Review, you and many other publications. Laura lives with her wife, Clara Jimenez, among the hills of Pomfret, Vermont, and we are so honored to have her here tonight. Please join me from wherever you are in welcoming Laura Foley. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Norwich Bookstore, for existing and for continuing to exist and for continuing to support poetry. Thank you, Carol, so much for bringing me along tonight and to help you to launch your book. Uh, thank you to everyone who's here. I see a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of people. I'm just scrolling through a lot of friends. Um, wonderful to see. I can see you in your pajamas. Uh, so I'm going to start with a um, poem from why I, the first poem and why I never finished my dissertation and it's called What Stillness. Lily pads ripple in summer breeze as if they bloom for me. Revelation white clouds float through a divine blue sky. No human voices break the stillness of this hilltop pond where I come to forget the foolishness of homo sapiens where a trout leaps from the lake, splashes shining down, opening a glimpse into the world below the surface. My dog, wet from her swim between the visible and hidden, shakes dots of sparkling light from her dark coat, forming a watery aura. What sunlight does to water, stillness does to us. This next poem is about an incident that happened uh, to me when I was in New York City a few years ago. And um, here we go, it's called The Vortex. Arriving early for a meeting in a dim church basement, I nearly stumble on a dazed elderly lady fallen prone on concrete, beset by a deacon fearful of lawsuits who asks who she is so repeatedly, he sounds like a machine, heightening the scene's surreality, till she quavers a name vaguely familiar to my groping brain. As sunlight fingers through a dusty window, like a feeble god ray, she's my mother's old elementary school friend, whose arm I take, to walk her slowly home through city streets so loud with hurry, their fury blurs my vision as we descend through the eye of its vortex into the vast unspoken realm of memory predating me. So in a way to answer the question of why I never finished my dissertation is this poem. Arriving home late to a ringing phone after a packed family car trip south, panting from lugging a basket of puppies up three flights of stairs as I press the door open with one foot, toddler following as I place the load on the floor as I juggle my thesis advisor's questions with my hungry sons. Straining my brain to remember what strategies Stevens's late odes employed, his elusive turns of phrase, ignoring the waking canines who escape and spread yipping across the living room floor, doing what puppies do best, while my toddler sits, 
squealing in the mess. So it's um, it's almost Valentine's Day. So I would read would like to read this poem for Clara, who I think is there in the other room. Beyond. I don't think of her as woman or man, just as I don't gender sunlight on my face the first coatless spring day or wind lacing the waves. The particular beauty of her eyes and gait, the tilt of her head as she listens, exists in a realm evolved beyond any words I know. Soul beyond any description of rose or peony. The way she tends me as one would a flower. So my leaves droop and petals wither when she is away from me. This poem, um, it really describes what happened to me this morning. It could have been, it was written not this morning, but it certainly could have been walking outside in minus four degrees before the sun rises or as the sun's rising. When I went out this morning, when I went out this morning, nothing unusual happened to me. Only my cleats keeping time on icebound earth, my dogs easy loping alongside, belying her claws clicking percussion. Down a hill so steep in the newborn sun, I nearly miss fox tracks leading to woods. The piteousness of doves cooing over our heads, reflecting wing lights winking like eyes as they pass. Nothing special to see when I went out this morning. And this morning I did actually see fox, brand new little fox tracks in, in the snow. This next poem goes back to when my children were little and um, we were on a trip in Venezuela. Herculean, we, wish we weather the rough waves together as the excursion boat takes its beating and I attempt to soothe us reading the Aeneid loud enough to drown the pounding out. When I read the chapter where Polynurus falls from the ship, I realize it too late, continuing to the underworld where we meet him, dead. Arriving at the coral bed at last, the captain gestures for us to jump in, speaking a language I do not understand, as he abandons my three young children and me to bob in deep water, attempting to snorkel. But the coral has faded from overfishing, and I don't know where our ship has gone. We're far from Margarita's white sand be beaches, where my husband past 80 nurses a torn Achilles, and I begin to see my future. Um, this poem, I often, it's really like a, an October 31st kind of poem. What the dead miss. This morning, I think I see in the light dimpling the river's emerald green beneath me, the faces of my dead husband, parents, and younger sister feel their fingers in the fresh breeze on my cheeks as I breathe the diesel smell of passing trucks, reminding me of my need to refuel. As I hold the nozzle in place, I watch clouds scurry and reform like roving ghostly crowds. I hear music in the liquid trickling, filling my tank to the brim. Music in my steady footsteps, tapping percussion on pavement, the car door closing with a click. They say that's what the dead miss most, an ordinary day spent like this. It's, um, it's almost my mother's birthday. She was born in February. And, uh, and I, this poem commemorates her when I was from when I was a child, learning by heart. 
I was seven, couldn't sleep, fearing my French teacher, afraid I couldn't learn a line I had to memorize. Mom, trilling the night's loneliest hour at the piano, made up a lilting song to help me remember. I did, and still do, her voice etched in tenderness, fingers running over the keys somewhere deep inside me. It was une étudiante n'est pas attentive, elle est un peu bavarde. That was a sentence that mom played on the piano. Um, I'm going to read three new poems. I think I still have time. Um, I'll, I'll read the last poem from, from Why I Never Finished My Dissertation, which is Gratitude List, and then three new poems. Gratitude List, praise be this morning for sleeping late, the sandy sheets, the ocean air, the midnight storm that blew its waters in. Praise be the morning swim mid tide, the clear sands underneath our feet, the dogs who leap into the waves, their fur sticky with salt, the ball we throw again and again. Praise be the green tea with honey, the bread we dip in finest olive oil, the eggs we fry. Praise be the reeds, gold and pink in the summer light, the sand between our toes, our swimsuits flapping in the breeze. How's everyone doing? <laughs> I like to see, I usually like to look out, you know, and see if, you know, people are okay. But um, I'm getting the vibe, you're doing okay. So I'm going to read three poems and um, my sister passed away in uh, November. So I have, <clears throat> I have these I'd like to read. And it was a shocking and, uh, and unexpected. A gated community, and she lived in Texas. She loved the security of the guard and the gate lifting for her car, keeping her safe until the night she immersed in a hot tub and her heart seized. She sank down, drowned, the water still running from the taps, water overflowing the tub, seeping under the door, soaking the rug, deepening for two weeks until it wept through the neighbor's wall, which is how I received a call. Then came the police breaking the locked door of her life and finding she'd escaped to a place where she'll always feel safe. My sister who loved real estate at peace beyond the gates. So I had to deal with um, having her house repaired after her passing, which involved flood damage to the house. And I had a lot of difficulty with the repair people. Um, and I also remember as a child, she used to frighten me by saying that bloody hands were coming out of the faucet of the bathtub. So all of this came together into this poem, which is a bit experimental. It's called Now the Repairman. My voice across the wires pierces the repairman's ears in Texas. This was my sister, ears in Texas. Blood you left a month after her passing, ears in Texas. Remembering her firstborn nine years to my lastborn four. Look at those bloody hands her paranoia saw pointing to the faucet so I wouldn't get in the bath with her. No Macbeth, my sister's blood was her own, tub her own, though my lawyer assures no fault in her dying flood. Her neighbors have no right to sue an act of God. How God or Fawcett's act, the running water flooding both townhouses, God or Claire's mischief? The repairman sends scrubbed tub photos so I can stop shouting through her laughter. Now the repairman, now the repair, my cold empty tub holding me like the sister I've missed since childhood. My voice wires, the repairman's ears in Texas, my sister ears, Texas, blood you left after her passing, Texas. 
Remember her nine years, look at those bloody hands pointing to the faucet. So I wouldn't, Macbeth, my sister's blood, tub her own, no fault in dying. Go sue an act of God or faucets flooding townhouses, God's mischief. The repairman sends scrub tub photos, shouting through her laughter, repair my cold tub holding me like the sister I've missed. My sister ears Texas left after her passing bloody hands, pointing to her dying flood, an act of God, holding me like the sister I've missed. My sister left after her passing blood, her tub flooding the sister I've missed. My sister flood, I miss my sister. And I will end with this poem um, to my sister, which I read uh, when my family, my children and I spread her ashes just a few weeks ago. Into the air, sifting my estranged sister's papers after her death, I find a 1996 associate's degree, community college high honors. I see the sun shining in my window's periphery, rosy light eking below hills, like my will to call her. All those years, these woods kept hemming the valley. All the fall days, these trees kept shedding their leaves, etching November in me. I find a recent photograph, the only glimpse I've had for years, seeing in my sister's face, a mirror I never noticed, her smile, a bit roguish. Warm congratulations on your degree, I speak to empty air, wonder if she hears. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Laura Foley. And uh, Claudia in the chat says, wow, I think uh, echoing what a lot of us out here in the audience are thinking. Everybody give it up for Laura Foley uh, from, from the comfort of your living rooms. Thank you so much. Um, and so nice to see uh, some of you uh, chiming in in the chat and folks uh, coming in from different places, from Seattle, from I know a few of you are here in the Upper Valley where I hope you're cuddled up next to a wood stove because it is like negative two last I checked. Um, so stay warm out there. Uh, tell us where you're from in the chat. Uh, and uh, thank you so much um, to all of you for joining us. Laura, thank you for uh, the powerful, beautiful poems. I am now so delighted to be welcoming Carol Westberg to our virtual stage. Carol Westberg's new collection is Iceland's. I have a copy here in my hand and you can get your copy as you can get a copy of why I never finished my dissertation at the Norwich bookstore. Uh, and I dropped a link just now in the chat to pick up uh, why I never finished my dissertation. If you want to order one from our website tonight, I'll do the same with Iceland's in just a moment. And again, just a reminder that your purchase supports these poets, supports our bookstore, and we are so grateful to you for that. Now, without further ado, I am just thrilled to welcome Carol Westberg. Carol Westberg's poetry books have been finalists for the Tampa Review Prize and the New Hampshire Literary Award. Her individual poems for the Ruth Stone Prize and the Poet Laureate's New Hampshire Poet Showcase. She's published poems in Prairie Schooner, Hunger Mountain, Calyx, and North American Review, among many other journals. A teacher, an editor, and a communications consultant, Carol lives in Hanover, New Hampshire, and her new collection is Iceland's, and we are so honored to have her joining us tonight. Welcome, Carol. Take it away. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Hello, I, mean, I guess I'm coming on soon. <laughs> I'll wait just a second. You can, well, I can read from here. <laughs> can you see me? I... Okay, all right. I can just see the Norwich bookstore there in the middle. All right. Well, first of all, thanks so much, Sam and the Norwich bookstore for, um, for hosting us. Uh, this is, I mean, we're just so, so lucky to have a bookstore like the Norwich Bookstore here. And this is the third book of the, that I've been, I've read my first reading at the Norwich Bookstore. So this is great. 
Um, well, I, I want to get one other, I mean, and also wow to, to Laura, it was just incredibly powerful poems, both in, in your collection and your new work about your sister. It's just very, very moving. Um, so I'm wondering if there's a way to get this change. Oh, well, we'll leave it like it is. <laughs> I, I particularly want to thank also Leah Rothstein, who did the artwork on the cover of my book, because I was, couldn't be happier with that. All right, let's read a few poems. I'm going to start with Road to Nowhere. The road to nowhere levitates, undulates, sweats and seethes in summer. In winter, buckles, cracks, swallows and suspecting cars in potholes grown huge. Does Macadam have no feelings for the wind, sun and moon and stars? Trucks rumble along its surface, pulling woolly horses and cargo unseen. Priests and thieves, immigrants and citizens, none with proper documents for this life or the next. Each passenger parts the air, stirs up dust, blind to a mirage of willows genuflecting, reflected in a stream that can't hear our sighs. Kansas loves its open spaces bordering Oklahoma, boundaries unmarked, roads striking out across no one's land, not your land, not my land. The road to nowhere leads past sun-bleached bones singing danger, wonder, always wide surprise at the end. This too, Jacaranda, Bougainvillea, Agapanthus, sand, barefoot under a splendiferous moon, mackerel clouds between, not knowing how far the ocean will recede from the boardwalk near the Mondego River's mouth. We return to the place we call home, sit, and watch a box turtle cross the flat stone path in our yard. Mosaic temple toting his altar, not charting happy or sad, so far as we know. <clears throat> Fear in the middle. No place is safe with these forked microbes under my skin. Like you, I carry death inside. Pause and think about it. Feel it in the pit of my stomach, back of my throat, twitching in my right eye. I feel great, except I'm dying, confided Jane, before she exhausted her last option to slaughter the tumors invading her ovaries and spine. Brave, glittering soul, now gone from my sight. I want to want and not want. Do you want to come down into this slough where a body grows heavy as a house of bricks or logs? Some days I float down a river of thought, barely aware of taking water in, sinking bereft of my memory of how to swim. You too face fear in the beginning and middle, never knowing how near the end is. On land, we feel safer in the middle of a herd, wanting not to be a sheep picked off at the periphery, most visible to wolves. This strategy doesn't protect us from ticks in the grass, landmines, sinkholes opening wide, livid and animal, 
We brave on, shoulder to shoulder, driven toward the edge. I'm gonna read this one for my, my husband, Peter. Marriage, human animal. It starts with an epigraph. The thing in itself has no abnormality by Guopu. A small spider spins in the north corner of our bedroom. In the momentum of our life with words, you tell me why the eighth king cut the sky rope. We alight in storm, drought, aspirations to be steadfast. Pause in the hard knowledge of bone protruding on my x-ray. I know less each day. Crack one egg in the glass bowl, another distracted in the kitchen sink. Don't hope for a better past. Accumulation of snapped wings, catcalls, Cornell's boxed owls. Be calmed on the post coital sea. Do you hear my flinch and quiver? See the light of my in my fingers spill out my eyes. In the isolation of his cork-lined room, Proust was large enough to contain kindness. I pause, open the door. Outside, as inside, we shift and glide. Ghost light. Another epigraph. It is only the light that we keep feeling a need to account for. That's from the Marfa Lights by W.S. Marvin. I've never seen the Marfa Lights, but have driven past the outpost of dreams, stopped at sunset to train my eyes on the horizon toward the Chinatis, hoping to see pulsing green or blood red orbs rise above yucca and desert scrub unexplained. I've never seen the mystery lights said to linger or streak across Mitchell Flat, but things I can't see happen every day, whether I'm there or not, when the lyre bird sings continents away. Inquiring, I live forward, some mysteries intact. I've never seen the ghost lights, but invite my brother's ghost to my side. Again, I remember how too much light died after his bike crashed. Gaze out to the horizon with soft eyes past Ocotillo, rock nettle and dormant desert seeds. I've never seen such a sunrise opening to the invisible, whatever is visible beneath the sand. Above the dark terrace, doves coo, signals wink on, off, nearer, farther. Receding from the horizon, the morning sky, a wild code of stars. This one, uh, speaking of roads and going different places, this one's from, uh, well, set in Orkney, as you probably will recognize, <laughs> the fires of Orkney. Blood Island, Bone Island, circle of 60 pillars, circle of the ditch cut deep around, circle of ocean horizon. I step into what remains of the ring of Rodgar, erected 
5,000 years ago. In silence, walk around, stop, and turn my back to the tallest stone left standing. A surge rises from this thin place through my feet, up my spine, from the top of my head, starward. Its new keepers cast wildflower seeds outside this ancient ring. Bell heather, ragweed, and bird's foot trefoil draw beads and birds disappearing on the mainland. Patterns speak like runes in shell and silt stone. I walk uphill to see how stones align with loch and isthmus. Listen for my ancestors' voices, fierce on the wind. Bitter house. In my fear, I'll end up bitter as chicory and alone, alone. Wind whipping long grasses in the dunes. With my fear, I'll end up like the husband I left in the wake of my faithlessness. Both of us wandering a wilderness of concrete streets. No one to go home to. No one to talk to in the swaddling dark. Past my fear, I'll end up bitter as burdock root, like a child beaten with her father's studded belt, grown, scarred, and angry, leaving home afraid of no ghost more than her father, living alone. I'm not alone in my fear, I'll end up like my ex, who fears his next wife will leave him, and she does. I've grown wary of acrid greens. I brew bitter nail tea, serve kiwi and pepitas as antidotes to soothe my two grown daughters in his reeds. And not alone in their fear, they'll end up on some windswept coast, scudding along like sea foam left quivering on damp sand. Autodidact. Deaf to my words, my daughter plunges into the surf and under, gasps and rises in time to glide on, elusive as fog. I can't tell her anything she doesn't grasp on her own. Whatever she heard under the surface of my words, the push pull of, I love you, she tunes to some inner drumbeat at sea, on land. I can't tell her anything in my mother's tongue. To her, it's Icelandic, undeciphered runes. She spins around, trips, blacks an eye, fractures an orbit blown. Gashes stitched, she wears her scars like beauty marks fading daily, as something unnamed surfs in with the next red tide. Let's see. Okay, Valentine. Too beautiful for words, this crisp blue sky morning. My daughter's horse trots beside her, his long gray tail streaming loose in late August light on the path uphill. Freed from saddle and bridle on this last walk, Valentine barely limps in his joy to be moving on grass again. A small silver truck waits at the edge of the cross country's course. The vet admits this is the worst part of his job, 
Ashur is my daughter. She's made the right choice. She hugs Valentine's neck, steps back. A second needle enters his flesh, delivers the killing barbiturate, sends him graceful as ever to his knees, side, full body down with a deep shudder. The vet pulls a cloth over Valentine's eyes. Silent minutes elapse until his sides stop rising and falling. His spirit levitates, chooses when to leave the field. Okay, I guess I'm gonna read, oh, two more. <laughs> This one's called Inch by Inch, an epigraph by Grace Paley, whom we all, many of us know well for either fiction or poetry. As you reside in the house, so it must be a home in your mind. I know this house, how sun filters in my study window in each season. Which crystal doorknob has come loose again? Which door scrapes the wooden floor? We intend to refinish before we leave this, our last house. How attached I've grown since we applied for community living. A place each will leave in a body bag, you likely before me, though no one knows for sure. This morning, I pour hot water into the Japanese teapot a friend gave me decades ago. Small work of art crafted to hold heat, every inch meant for its job. Will you come too, little teapot? Your black iron knob shines from daily touch, concentric circles out to the lid's edge, echo down the sloping sides. How mysterious the friendships that endure, traveling wherever I reside. We'll move to our last home soon, not a house like the one we're leaving. I'll measure furniture to fit three rooms. Choose a few stones and shells carried home from Moose Mountain and Drake's Bay. In far countries, I dream of seeing again. Will the daughter want the rocker my father made or the one found in the hills of San Francisco the day my water broke? Which books shall I take, give away? Oh, cherished space, mine's home. I know each thing will be released. Okay, I guess this is it. Where are we? I think we're fine. <clears throat> Old riddle. Boiling water swirls in the pot, the egg drops from my spoon, and I turn down the heat, legs naked as Derrida's before my cat, who licks any bare skin he can reach. Would he gnaw my bones underneath? In Sweden, my ancestors' descendants compost human remains, freeze a corpse in liquid nitrogen, shatter it into tiny pieces, nugget-sized, to mix with bacteria in biodegradable boxes to bury in the earth. 
how useful to continue in this way. Today, I watch the egg slow in its swirl. Look a little deeper and see the borders aren't fixed between my mother and the chicken, the egg and me. Thank you again, everybody for coming. And um, I guess we'll take, send us all back to <laughs> our host. <laughs> And thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, and so nice to see uh, everybody in the chat um, grabbing on to little pieces of, uh, of your, your poetry as you read. I'm seeing all sorts of uh, lovely phrases being tossed back and forth um, in here. Uh, thank you so much to everyone um, who is out there attending. I'm seeing people from Chicago, from Montreal, Seattle, San Francisco, Brooklyn, New York, all over the place. And of course, so many of us uh, right here in the Upper Valley uh, tonight. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, we have just a few minutes left. If anyone has questions, uh, we would, of course, love to hear from you. You can ask questions in the chat or drop them in the Q&A. Uh, oh, someone dropping in from Hawaii, uh, all over the place. Wow, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, one thing I would love to know from both of you, Laura and Carol, is what is next for each of you? You're both prolific poets and uh do you have something something new in the works i would say that laura is the prolific poet we know that from the number of books she's published and laura and i are actually in a poetry group together and i she's the most prolific poet i know um anyway it's it's great um i uh have experienced a somewhat of a dearth the reason i'm not reading new poems since uh this book is that i'm waiting for the next project to come i've been reading writing some about fernando pessoa and translating some of his fiction into um, poetry and stuff but i don't think that's going to be who knows what the next project will be i'm leaving that to laura who's always got another project <laughs> um well i do have um a book called Is This coming out from Salmon Press, which has been delayed because of COVID and is supposed to be in 2022, I think. Um, another book called Everything We Need, Poems from El Camino, poems I wrote about our, my Clara and I walked uh, 500 miles across Northern Spain. So I wrote a series of poems and that should be coming out this year from Headmistress Press. And in 2023, I've just signed a contract with Fernwood Press for a collection called Sledding the Valley of the Shadow. And um, I just found that out a couple of weeks ago, right before we had a big snowstorm and I was able to go sledding in celebration um, of the new book. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Oh, beautiful, I love it. And uh, we'll, we'll be very excited to see those new projects from you, Laura. And uh, Carol, I don't know, sometimes the mystery of the thing is is part of the joy of it. I can't wait to see what's what's next from I you as well. That's, that's kind of, you know, that's what it's all about. Well, thank you both so much. Again, here, we're here tonight with Laura Foley and Carol Westberg. Carol Westberg's new collection is Iceland's. It's this beautiful book right here. Uh, I've dropped a link in the chat to order Iceland's from the Norwich bookstore. Um, we would be happy to ship this book to you anywhere in the country, wherever you may find yourself, or if you'd like to pick one up here in our store. We are located right on Main Street in Norwich, Vermont, and we would love to see you. We're open seven days a week. And Laura Foley's most recent collection, Why I Never Finished My Dissertation, was the collection from which you heard poems earlier in the evening. This book also available, link in the chat, link on our website. And uh, if you're in the area, we hope you'll drop by and pick up a copy of that one from our shelves as well. Carol Westberg, Laura Foley, thank you both so much for joining us. And uh, thank you to everyone out there. Uh, Heather says, what a treat. Two wonderful poets. I forgot how cold I am.
Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and all of you out there, thank you so much. And uh, be well, do good work, stay safe, stay warm tonight. And we'll see you next time. Yes. Laura, Carol, thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. We really, we really feel appreciated that you yes. should for the reading. Thank you. Thank you all. And everyone, have a great night. Yeah. <laughs>